For today's video, I'm going to be doing something a little different. November of 2020, when NaNaWriMo was in full swing, and I had tried to do just half of a NaNaWriMo, and I gave a quick outline. And I was basically like, uh, here, watch me throw together some ideas, and then write up a quick outline, and that's what I'm going to use for NaNaWriMo 2020. And I did that. I put out the little outline just very quickly, bare bones, bare minimum. And then after that video, I was supposed to write that story. And with that bare bones outline, I realized I need a much more detailed outline. Otherwise, my free writes always feel like they're going nowhere. I forget how many words I wrote. It wasn't very much. But uh, I just kept having the feeling like, well, where is this going? I need to know. What's the character's goal? What's the character arc going to be? What is, you know, where is the story going at the end and all the beats along the way? And I just, I have to fill those out in order to actually sit down and write because I can free write and I could just throw clay on the table and try to mix things and just try to edit things into a coherent story. But it just, it just doesn't work that well for me that way. So now that NaNaWriMo is over and I can kind of uh, throw together my own deadlines, right? I have these new weekly updates that I upload now. And so I can say, look, I'm going to break down the characters this week, the setting the next week and the plot, uh, you know, the third week or something like that. And I can go and then the next week after that, the first draft and then the second draft and how I change and then the second draft, and so on and so forth. I can do this now and check in and kind of announce publicly, like I'm gonna do this thing and give myself deadlines that I can stick to and break the story down into pieces that I can actually manage and structure this all out so when I do sit down and write, I know exactly where this is going. I know exactly what target I'm trying to hit and I think it will work out a lot better this way. For today's video, I'm gonna be going over the character outlines for my antagonist and my protagonist. And I'll briefly go over a character template that I've created based on um, all the books I've read on the craft of writing, basically. Now, keep in mind, I'm an overthinker and an over outliner. I'm not saying anybody else should do it this way. I'm just saying this is the way that I'm finding is working for me at this time as I'm trying and experimenting with a lot of stuff. This just feels right for me, okay? Just want to point that out. Let's see, okay, first we start off with the character wants or goals. Because uh, in every chapter, in every moment, the character has to want or be trying to do or accomplish something. If they're just letting things happen to them and they're just, they don't care, they're apathetic towards life, uh, that's going to get boring really fast. So they need to be working towards something. Now, To make that even more intriguing, most characters should have a ghost or a lie. And by ghost, I mean like something that haunts them, like not an actual ghost, but more like an insecurity or a lie that they tell themselves. Maybe something bad happened in the past and that is haunting them. And for ideas on things that would haunt them, on what kind of emotional wound a character can have, you can always check out The Emotional Wound Thesaurus by Angela Ackerman and Becca Pugilisi. I definitely said that name wrong. But <laughs> in that they have a listing of all these things that, all these just ideas for emotional wounds and how a character might respond to those. If you don't want to do that, that's totally fine. And also another book that talks about the lie or the ghost would be uh, Creating Character Arcs by K.M. Wyland. In Creating Character Arcs, K.M. Wyland basically describes the lie like this. Your character is incomplete on the inside. He's harboring some deeply held misconception about either himself, the world, or probably both. I feel like this is an important part of building a character arc because you need something for them to overcome. You need something to change from start to finish. When the story starts, they have this weird misconception or think something that's just not true and then at the end you know they hopefully resolve it or you know die trying <laughs> okay next up the needs now 
obviously what they want is based on the lie, right? They have some misconception or insecurity about something and they think they want whatever this is, something, and that's what their goals are aiming for. At some point during the story, hopefully they realize the truth and then they go after what they need, right? Next, positive attributes and negative attributes, right? So you want them to have some positive traits and some negative traits. That just makes them feel more human. Now you'll see I have listed under positive attributes, moral achievement, interactive, and identity. Now that's based off of another <laughs> thesaurus called the positive trait thesaurus, also by Angela Ackerman and Becca Pugilisi. And in the positive trait thesaurus, they talk about having a moral attribute, basically what's a word that would describe their sense of morality. You know, are they honest? Are they, uh, do they have integrity? Maybe they don't. Then we have the achievement attribute, which is basically what words would you use to describe the way they accomplish tasks? And then the interactive attribute would be uh, what words would you use to describe the way they interact with other characters, other people? The identity attribute would be uh, what word would describe uh, who they identify as, as part of, you know, are they creative? Are they analytical? How would you describe them? And the negative attributes, uh, everybody needs a flaw. That just makes every character feel more real. Nobody's perfect. Now, with that out of the way, that is essentially my character template. So we'll go over my protagonist and my antagonist. Now, um, there's going to be minor characters also. I'm not going to list those yet because I still want to go over the setting. And once I have all the beats down in all eight chapters, for the plot, then I will know exactly how many side characters I'm going to have and who to make a template for, even though it's a short story, just because that's how my mind works, I guess. Okay, so the protagonist of this story is Victor. You don't know much about him yet. Personality type, ENTP, aka the debater. Another thing I'm throwing in, just to make this feel a little bit more like uh, real people. If you're not familiar with the Myers-Briggs personality test, you can go to 16personalities.com and then you can see the 16 personality types. Everybody will fall into one of these personality types. And the way I use this is just to basically pick. I could just go through and just like, here's the analyst and then the diplomats and you have mediator, protagonist, campaigner, advocate, sentinels, consul, explorer, adventurer. So you have all these personality types and what we do with that, like let's click on the debater. You can see their strengths and weaknesses, which is mainly what I'm gonna use this for. So just like that, the debater is knowledgeable, quick thinkers, original, excellent brainstormers, charismatic, energetic. And their weaknesses are very argumentative, insensitive, intolerant, can find it difficult to focus, dislike practical matters. That's what Victor is, he has the debater personality type and that will be his strengths and his weaknesses for now. You can, if you'd like, you could take the test just in the mindset of the character you're trying to create and answer all the, I think there's like a hundred questions. You answer all the questions and it'll give you a personality type, or you could just look at the different personality types there are and just pick one, which is what I did. I just picked a personality type and said, ah, I'm gonna go with that one. I feel like this will work for this story that I have in mind. Oh yeah, and in case I haven't mentioned it already, uh, there will absolutely be spoilers for my story, this short story. I'm working on a few. Uh, this one will definitely get spoiled if you follow along. Just throwing that out there. As we go through the step-by-step -step process of creating this all the way up into the point that I self-publish, we're definitely going to spoil this story. Just want to point that out. So Victor's goal in this story is to <laughs> stop his girlfriend from dying. After she passes, he must carry out her dying wish and spread her ashes in the forest of her family. Secondary goal, bring her back to life. Now, this is going to sound really weird because you don't know the whole plot <laughs> and the setting and you, you don't have all the other background information here. So his goal is going to kind of seem like, well, that's weird. Basically, his girlfriend is a fairy and she's lived outside of her forest for too long and she's slowly dying. And she doesn't want to go back because her family and the other fae are just 
terrible to her. And so she has chose to live and die amongst the humans. And so she, had, she does, she dies in the first chapter. And basically her dying wish is for him to just put her ashes back in the forest, but not to talk to anybody there. Don't engage, don't stay there for very long. Just spread her ashes in the forest and get the hell out of there. She makes him like promise. And of course he doesn't get the hell out of there because how else would we have a story? After she passes, his lie, his traumatic event is that she has passed and he blames himself for it. He thinks that it's his fault that she died and he failed to save her. So this is something he's gonna have to overcome emotionally through eight chapters. <laughs> now, let's see. And so what he needs is to realize that it's not his fault that she died. And it's pretty simple. He just needs to realize that uh, it wasn't on him. That, that was her choice. And he needs to learn to let go. Opposite, starring opposite Victor, we have our antagonist. And that is Lynette. She's an evil fairy violinist. <laughs> so if you followed along the NaNoWriMo video, you will have seen that I, the ideas I was playing with basically was like a, a Pied Piper kind of character that plays a violin and a forest where bad things happen. <laughs> and so this is part of that. Now Lynette, now Lynette, let's see, has the entertainer personality type, which gives her these good and bad qualities. And then her goal is a little more complicated. <laughs> she plays the villain, so her goal day to day, or month to month, week to week, whatever, is she lures humans into the forest and sacrifices them to the spirit of the forest, which in this case is a demonic bear that she summons. And she summons this bear by playing the violin. Every time she does this, her and the nearby fae get a boost of magic from the bear. Their magic gets stronger and they get a feeling of euphoria. They basically get high off human sacrifices. They get a magic high. This is her goal. This is all she really lives for is this to find people, lure them into the forest, sacrifice them to the bear, get a boost in magic, get high, basically. That's, she's a magic addict, basically. The lie that she tells herself is that sacrificing humans is a sustainable way to exist. She thinks this is fine. The humans, they're lesser. They're not like Fae. And so she's, she thinks she's better, which is primarily why her sister, who is the, who is Victor's girlfriend, fled the forest and didn't want to go back. She realized uh, her family is kind of messed up. Her need is to realize that she can't keep killing innocent people without incurring a cost and that she will and that she is basically a magic addict she needs to realize this is terrible behavior and stop or else uh somebody will come for her <laughs> she can't keep doing all this bad stuff and expect nothing to happen in return so we have these two opposing forces they will meet each other in the forest on my next writing update i will it'll either be a uh, the eight chapter breakdown or the setting breakdown w whatever one i finish and edit first and then you can kind of see more of the story and how this is growing now i might play around with some of the good and bad qualities a little bit more but but basically this is the character outline for my protagonist and my antagonist now the plan is to have an update every week to use the weekly update to say I'm gonna be doing this this week. And then I go out and I do it. And it'll be one of my weekly videos will be some kind of update as I take you through creating these stories. So this is the first one. I'm working on some other stuff outside of this. So it won't be spoiled for you guys, but just as the year progresses, I hope to do more of these and just keep pumping out stories, hopefully. Hopefully this will be just a cool way to keep me on track and also to show you guys my process as it goes and as it grows and evolves so until next time later